All right, what's up, everybody? It is Zach McCarley, and this is the video from the Clydesdale Games in West Hartford, Connecticut. Before I start off with the commentary on the events and the contest in general, I just want to say that it was an awesome trip. It was uh, it was great to see New York City. I've never been up in that corner of the U.S. before. Connecticut was beautiful. Uh, I got to see a couple friends that drove out, and I want to give a huge thank you to Johnny Wasiko, who actually was my host for this trip. I wasn't going to be able to make the trip originally, and he, you know, I put some out on Facebook, can I crash on anybody's couch uh, in the New Jersey, Connecticut area, and within five minutes, he responded, he's like, hey man, uh, I'm going to be going to the contest anyway, you should just fly into New York, and uh, I can put you up, don't even worry about it, and so that's what I did, and it was it was an awesome time, we got to go training, um, the day after the contest, I was a little bit banged up, but they hit, uh, him and Mark hit some awesome numbers the day after, and so it was a lot of fun. Anyway, my flight from Seattle, Newark went pretty clean. It was just a five-hour flight and then two-hour drive from Newark to West Hartford, Connecticut the morning of the show. A couple of changes were made to the contest the morning of. Uh, I think they were equally beneficial for strongmen and crossfitters. Um... The you know some of the events were cut down a little bit. Other events were uh, changed orders, and yeah. So what you see right here is the very first event. It was the 600 pound yoke for about 75 feet, then 50 double unders, 50 wall balls with 30 pound wall ball, and then 75 feet with the 600 pound yoke again. <clears throat> um, this was not a good day to start the. This was not a good way to start the day. I wound up taking seventh, but. Uh, I, the circumstances in which I started the event were not that great. I was, I was running around before the contest trying to figure out what the competitor order was because I wanted to make sure I was warm because I've had this lower back issue that's been bugging me since March and I found out that I was in the very first heat and so I was like, oh, well, shit, I at least need five or six minutes to warm up and they're like, no, you got to go now, you got to go now and I'm like, well, shit, okay, where's a rope? And then like, oh well the ropes are inside and I looked for the ropes and they were they weren't like the ball bearing ropes that you do double unders with typically and so I started running around the crowd asking for a rope from random people and eventually I tracked one down. The rope happened to be a little bit too long, so I started I started asking for like a knife or a screwdriver if anybody had a Swiss Army knife and I finally tracked one of those down and then I adjusted the rope down to size did like two or three double unders and I was like that's gonna have to work and didn't get a chance to warm up or stretch before this event so I was a little bit sassy going into this event I uh, yeah I think once or twice I was like man this event would be easier if I would have got to warm up <laughs> like just yelling at people um, not my best moment but I mean what are you gonna do maybe the anger helped a little bit so, I, like I said, I took about 7th in this event. Uh, the wall balls just killed me. I I couldn't, like, the, the weight of a 30-pound wall ball is just slightly different than a 20, not, you know, just negating that it's harder, but the balance issue is a little bit different. When you throw it, you have to kind of control it a little more. It's kind of strange. Um... And I just wasn't used to that. If you watch the first couple throws, I actually missed the wall completely. And uh, if you're counting the throws, which I doubt you are, I probably wound up throwing it up there about 60 times just because just cause of missed reps and lack of control. And so that was a little bit aggravating. But luckily Johnny, who's standing right behind me right there, he was yelling at me, yelling in my ear the whole time. I think when I turned around right there, I was like, should have warmed up for this or something. Um, but it is what it is. I mean, you know, you you live and you learn.
All right, so the second event was a kettlebell swing, object carry and load, and then a sled drag right at the end. We had three objects to load with 15 kettlebell swings before each object load. And uh, I believe this was either 50 or 75 feet, I can't remember. Um, this actually turned out to be the barn burner of <laughs> the whole contest. I mean, this is laying people out and myself included like I said um, well actually one of the issues that I had with the contest and I mean it was it's quite possibly that it's just my own ignorance was I I expected that this contest was going to be reverse order uh, reverse placing order that means if you take first in the event you have the benefit of going last to see what you have to beat in an attempt to hold on to your uh, to your placing that wasn't the case. They decided to keep the order the same, so I got to go first on every single event, which, um, you know, in my mind is a huge disadvantage, and I think most people would tend to agree with me. But, you know, it is what it is, and I'm a little bit wiser for that. Maybe, maybe I'll ask about that in the future contests that I compete in, make sure it's reverse order. But, you know, I, I voiced my concerns with some of the officials, and they kind of, they said, well, we don't want people taking last, like the people that go last taking last and then having to go directly again. And I said, well, maybe they should have prepared better if they're taking last in the event. <laughs> and they didn't really like that. <laughs> so, uh, but I did, I did bring up the valid point that it is a huge advantage to go last because you know what you have to do. Uh, to win the contest, you you maybe don't have to overexert yourself. When when going first, you kind of just have to. Sometimes you pace yourself if you have to be smart. Sometimes you have to. Uh, you go too hard and you end up burning yourself out. And so, just going first in general is a disadvantage. And I wasn't too terribly pleased about it. And right here, you'll see I finished my 15 kettlebell swings, and then I kind of carry it in a weird way. Um, I finished 15, brought it back down, and then brought it back up to carry it. I wasn't sure if they'd let me have it, but later it turned out that people were able to, on the 15th swing, swing it up to uh, their arms and carry it and call it good, which, you know, whatever. Um, again, a negative of going first. That's the way it goes. But this drag was dreadful. It was just... It destroyed me. <laughs> My legs felt like jello, and I couldn't even—I couldn't even get that sled moving. And it wasn't even that heavy. The, the sled was only like 550 or something. I've never had that kind of issue. Uh, looking back, I wish I would have brought my rock climbing shoes. But to be perfectly honest, I'm not sure how much they would have helped me. Um, I'm not sure if it was a traction issue so much as just my legs being so burnt out. Um, so the specs of the con the specs of this event were a 120 pound keg that was carried down a 100 to 150 pound sandbag I think it was closer to 100 and a um, then the 106 kettlebell that we did 15 swings with three times for a total of 45 kettlebell swings and you load them all up in the sled and then drag the sled back the rule that I was told in the beginning was your head has to cross the line and so at the end of this, you're going to see me just totally dive for the line. And I was, I remember yelling, my head across the line, stop the time, my head across the line. Um, I believe I took third in this event. I might have took fourth. Um, yeah, it was, it was just a brutal event, but it was good. Uh, my kind of event, the one that you kind of got to dig deep for and kind of just trashes everybody. <laughs> All right, tire flip, dead ball, shoulder. So this is one of the this is one of the minor things that they changed. Um, there was something to benefit strongman or strongman and to benefit the CrossFitters in this contest or in this in this particular event. So they dropped the volume from twelve nine six each to nine six three each, which I think benefits strongmen. But at the same time, they uh, they changed the Atlas Stone to a dead ball, which I had never touched before. And uh, I had originally planned to one motion the Atlas Stone on my shoulder without much of an issue, but 
the dead ball is a little bit different. It's it's kind of strange, and so I wound up doing this lap and then throw it over the shoulder motion. I kept a pretty good pace throughout the whole event. I think my time was about 3.55, and I wound up taking second in this event to a guy out of the Northeast. I think his name was Danny something. He was actually a CrossFitter. I can't believe a CrossFitter beat me in this event. <laughs> but, heck, I mean... Um, I guess he just showed up, you know, like, he wound up taking second in the whole contest, I wound up taking third in the whole contest, Scott Porter took first, way to represent Scott, <laughs> lightweight pro out of Arizona, um, but yeah, Scott just, he just commanded the whole contest, he, uh, by the end of the second event, he was, he had a decisive lead, at any rate, uh, Scott finished about two seconds behind me, in this event, and I watched him, and he was just moving, and so I was like, well, you know, whoa, how did Danny finish, because he was the only other guy that I was really concerned about uh, at that point, because the, the standings had came out, and I was in a group of people that were about eight points ahead of every, or nine points ahead of everyone else, and uh, Danny beat me by like 30 seconds on this event, which I couldn't even believe, because I thought I was moving pretty good, um, Danny's actually in the back on the right right there. A uh, guy with the shirt off. At any rate, yeah, I just, I couldn't even believe being beat like that. <clears throat> but it is what it is. Um, it's kind of cool to play with this dead ball. It's an interesting, has an interesting feel to it. It's kind of like a, a squishy atlas stone is the way that I would describe it. But the weight inside feels like it's lead or lead sand mixture. And it, it uh, you know, you can't build momentum like you can with an atlas stone. It's just you have to keep you have to keep physically controlling it, which is pretty cumbersome. Something that really helped me in this event though was I had three left in this set of six on the dead ball, and Johnny Wasiko was in my ear yelling, "Just three sets of three, just three triples, three triples!" And for some reason that just totally clicked in my head. It made so much sense. And that really helped me follow through, uh, finish this a little bit stronger. All right, the last event was the press medley. First implement was a 120-pound dead ball. Second implement was a 12-inch 120 dumbbell. Third implement was a 225 standard barbell. Fourth implement was a 240 axle, I believe. Fifth implement was a 250-pound 8-inch log, which I haven't I haven't played with an 8-inch log in a while. It was kind of uh, it was just different, a lot easier to jerk, but at this point my back was a little bit fried. Then we got to uh, noticeably heavier implements. This next implement was a 180-pound dumbbell. I've never actually played with a big dog dumbbell before, so it was uh, like not one of this size, so it was kind of interesting. I had to uh, talk to some guys, and luckily uh, Johnny Wasiko and Robert Kearney, who you see behind me with the mohawk, uh, both both offered up some really helpful information on the implement, which allowed me to press it the first time. And gave a little pose for the camera that they had there. Uh, honestly, <laughs> I was just a little bit frustrated at this point. I, I checked out a little bit. Um, usually I don't pose in the middle of an event. And I knew that this was going to be slow because one of the rules was if you drop the implements two times, you have to stop the event. So you have you have one chance to fail. And then the second time, if you drop it without the successful down command, then you have to stop. <laughs> and I'd never, I'd never done a kettlebell clean, which is what this is. Each of these are 106 pounds. 
I'd never done one, but luckily Matt Mills showed up and showed me and a couple other guys how to clean these dumbbells or clean these kettlebells. And he made it look so easy. Like, we made it look kind of hard. <laughs> He's a beast. And a pretty nice guy. Um, at any rate, the second attempt, I wound up getting it. And then the last implement in this press medley was the hammer. It was like a 200-pound hammer. It was kind of awkward, and I spent about a minute and a half thinking that I was going to... I was going to get under it and I was going to press it. Like I was going to strict press it. And then about a minute and a half in, I'm just like chewing up so much time. And there was no time limit on this event. It's two fails and you're done. Um, so I was chewing up so much time. And somebody yelled, press it like a block. And I was like, oh, well, duh. And just cleaned it up on my chest, pressed it like a block, no problem. And <laughs> again, big disadvantage of going first. <laughs> <laughs> uh, from then on, you know, everybody kind of knew how to do it, but I wound up taking second in this event. Um, that's the way it goes. I wound up taking second in the contest overall. Like I said before, there were, you know, there were a couple things that threw me off. I'd, I'd never been in a contest that was not reverse order, and I've talked to a couple CrossFitters since then, and they've... Uh, they told me, yeah, you know, the, uh, that's, that's, you know, somewhat common. It's about 50, 50 for CrossFit contests, at least in the Northwest region. And so I was like, oh, well, crap. You know, that was, that's kind of my own ignorance coming into a heavily CrossFit show and thinking that it was reverse order. Just, you know, I didn't even think to ask maybe, <laughs> maybe I'll be a little bit wiser next time. Again, the you know the guys that ran the show, Mike Jenkins, and the owner of CrossFit Relentless out in West Hartford, Connecticut, ran a good show. Um, uh, from what I hear, it ran short for a CrossFit contest. It was a little bit long for a strongman contest, but we're not so patient. We just like our events to be done and over with. And all these events were about four times as long as a strongman event. So. Anyway, I, I plan to go next year if they hold one. And when I do come back, I'll be a little bit wiser. <laughs> I'll bring my own rope. I'll be doing those things. Uh, after this weekend, my back was a little bit tweaked, but that's the way it goes. I knew that my back was uh, it's still healing up from March. I'm going to take the next five weeks to just relax and recuperate and I'm not even you know I'm not even doing anything except for eating and laying down probably about 12 hours a day including my sleep uh, no stretching because I think uh, I think we have a hypermobility issue in the L3 L4 junction where my L3 is shifting posterior and it's pinching the uh, a lot of the nerves that run down into my legs and in my lumbars and it's shutting down a lot of that uh, a lot of those structures. So that's not a good thing to have going on in your body. <laughs> At any rate, I may be putting up a couple more videos of my training for this. I do have three, uh, three videos that I did not post. And if anybody wants to see those, let me know in the comments. Um, and maybe I'll post them up. Anyway, I'm, I'm kind of rambling at this point, so I will cut it. Uh, please... Be sure to subscribe to my channel and Strength Crew TV, and I'll catch you guys in the next video. I hope you enjoyed it, and catch you guys next time.